Alright, uh, Assalamualaikum uh, Selamat petang semua um, Saya Rupian um, Ya, terima kasih kerana menonton uh, filem Maksum tadi Thank you so much for attending uh, today's screening um, The film um, was directed by our Prof. Hatta Azad Han uh, it's an honor to be with uh, Prof. Hatta today. Um, for your information, Prof. Hatta also is my ex-boss. We are at UITM uh, last time. Uh, and um, uh, Prof. Hatta um, is a very well-known um, figure in Malaysia's uh, cultural and creative industry. And... Um, he has um, written um, a number of significant plays eh, in Malay language, um, such as uh, Kerusi, Mayat, Patung Patung, eh, circa 1970s, eh, Prof. And um, Prof also um, has been very well known uh, uh, with his uh, longest running TV sitcom, Pi Mai Pi Mai Tang Tu, eh? at over TV3, yeah, for several decades, where he collaborated with director Othman Hafsham. And then the, um, Prof also, uh, so Matsum was his uh, first feature directorial debut, and um, his second film is Wayang. Uh, produced by UITM. So Wayang deal with uh, the nation's fading uh, traditional arts. Um, <coughs> Prof also um, has um, garnered a number of awards eh, in uh, literary, film and educational scenes eh, from National Literary Award for Drama to Southeast Asia Right Award. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, that's a, a kind of a brief introduction um, on uh, Hatta Azad Han. So now um, let's proceed with uh, some questions eh? uh, before we open to the floor. Um, I would like to ask uh, Prof first eh? a number of questions. Um, yeah, uh, for your information, Matsum also um, won Best Screenplay eh, at the 1991 Malaysian Film Festival. And it was invited to a number of film festivals also um, around the world, uh, from Tokyo, Fukuoka, Bangalore, to Taipei and Jakarta. Right? Yes, um, Prof, um, I would like to know um, what triggered or inspired you to adapt um, large uh, graphic novel into a film because for your information this film is an adaptation eh? um, of uh, large uh, graphic novel Matsum perhaps this, this film marks the first Malaysian film ever to have adapted um, a comic or a graphic novel into a film yes, Silakan Prof yeah, thank you, thank you for coming thank you uh, coming for this screening. Uh, I was actually uh, excited when Azad called me one day that he wanted to screen this film, to screen this film again. It was my first uh, film, actually. I, I made it in 1990. I was a great fan of Lat. I was and still am, yeah, still. Um, I read much so as a comic book and um, thought that uh, it can be made into a film. My main intention that time was to introduce uh, Malaysian cinema to the world. Yeah. So uh, when I met film, it, uh, when I met Matsum, it was not just meant for local audience. My intention was to to introduce Malaysian cinema to the world. Um, I uh, did everything myself actually. I uh, contacted um, overseas uh, film festival. In fact, it was first. Uh, uh, the first to accept the film to be screened in International Film Festival was Tokyo. 
Tokyo International Film Festival. I still remember uh, I did everything myself. I, I never asked anybody else. Um, when he was accepted, uh, one officer from Finas called me one day and asked for a copy of the film to be sent to Tokyo. I said, uh, what for? It has already been accepted. So uh, uh, he wa they were very surprised because they wanted to send it themselves through Finas. I said, no, I sent it myself and it was already accepted. So that was my main intention. I wanted to go uh, to, to the rest of the world and introduce Malay cinema to um, all countries. And after it was accepted by uh, Tokyo, it went on to Hawaii, it went on to Bangalore, it went on to uh, Amsterdam, and a couple more uh, f film festival. So that was actually my main intention. I uh, took the story from Lat and thought that it is a great story. It tells about a Malaysian uh, in the 80s, late 80s, how um, young men from Kampong can survive in KL. Uh, it was a life that I believe that each and every one of us go through when we, we migrated from our Kampong to come and live in, in KL. It was uh, in the 70s, 80s. That's why you see Bas Mini and all that. Yeah? So I wanted to depict that in the film. Uh, the comic book was actually very simple. I have to rewrite the screenplay myself. I have to make it tighter. I have to to uh, develop the characters, especially the father and mother in the kampong. I have to develop um, his relationship between him and uh, the girl next door, the neighbor. Um, I remember um, reading one review from uh, Terry Benjamin, the star who wrote reviews, Malay film reviews in the star. Terry uh, wrote that uh, Matsum was uh, one of the uh, most romantic film that he has ever seen. Yeah, that was by Terry Benjamin. Uh, so um, that's about it. Yeah, it's, it, it tells the story not just about love story, but also life struggle uh, from a kampong boy who came to this big city like KL. Yeah. Okay. Um, I used to read um, your book, yeah? your academic book, The Malay Cinema. Untuk pengetahuan semua, uh, Prof. Hatta juga menulis uh, banyak menerbitkan buku termasuk antara yang terawalnya, the one of his earliest book is The Malay Cinema, based on his doctoral thesis, eh? um, where Prof. Hatta locates uh, the notion of Malay cinema, Malaysian cinema at the time, national cinema within the uh, framework of national cinema and third cinema, right? And in the book, um, you did mention and you also kind of like advocate the idea or the notion of middle cinema, one that combine um, yeah. artistic and commercial motivations in filmmaking. So I would like to know, could you tell us, Prof, that whether uh, much soon this film uh, exemplifies your notion of middle cinema, itu, cinema pertengahan itu? Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, Indian cinema, yeah? um, regardless of whether it is it's meant in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, or Gujarat. I watch almost all of them. Um, I thought that um, they, uh, they give to the world a kind of film that can be appreciated uh, by just everyone. And India is a good example of how um, they combine the, the commercial elements with the artistic elements and they call it middle cinema. Uh, I adapted the same uh, kind of uh, notions that a good film is something that can be appreciated at both levels. Yeah? It has to have some commercial elements into it, but at the same time, not forgetting the artistic aspect of it. So that was the reason why uh, I picked Matsum. Um, I know it can entertain at the same time it make people think about life uh, in those days. Yeah? So uh, to me, um, that is the best formula to make a film. It has to be, it has to be able to attract um, majority of the audience who love um, 
commercial aspect of it. But at the same time, they have to look at cinema as an artistic work as well. Yeah? That's how middle cinema came into being. Um, from the opening credit, if um, you guys have noticed this now, um, the opening credit um, uh, states that um, Matsum is a film buatan Malaysia, a film made in Malaysia, right? Um, I understand that um, during those times, especially uh, this film uh, was released in 1990. Prior to this, uh, throughout the 1980s, um, many films were made um, uh, to cater to uh, Malay audiences only, yeah. you know, like, um, and then, um, but we had, um, we witnessed a number, a, a few only, a handful of uh, local films that, you know, attempted to reflect Malaysia's multiculturalism. You know, one of them um, is Mechanic, 1983, directed by Half Sham, yeah. And then uh, during the same year, 1992, there's another comedy or so, is it another mud film? called Mat Gelap, uh, with a multi-ethnic uh, cast yeah. directed by uh, Zarul Abakri. Yeah. So, um, d what made you um, want to um, reflect this kind of, you know, multiculturalism, uh, apart from, you know, um, uh, it's an adaptation of uh, Lutz's work, because Lutz very well known uh, with this kind of uh, portrayal of Malaysia's multiculturalism and so forth. Um, did it have to do with um, your close affinity or relations with Othman Hafsham as well? You know, both of you work together. Yeah. Um, um, Hafsham is actually my teacher. Yeah, I regard I, re I regard him as my teacher. He was the one who, um, before I went to do my PhD in Australia, he was the one who taught me uh, cinematic techniques. Um, using 35 mm cameras, um, filming commercials, and things like that. He was the one who introduced me into the film uh, film world through um, make the making of commercial cinema, C co commercial advertisement for for television. I used to follow him to do uh, lots of uh, commercials. Uh, he introduced me what is storyboard. Uh, how film lenses work, how framing and things like that work. So he was actually my guru. Um, I um, I read about his um, his first film was Adik Manja. Adik Manja. I read about his film when I was still in the U.S. Then immediately after coming back to Malaysia. Uh, I saw a poster that, that the film was being screened in a small theater in Kajang. Yeah, uh, waktu tu, uh, that time my, my wife was pregnant, uh, seven month pregnant. I dragged her to go into the Kajang cinema without aircon, just uh, kipas angin, panas. Yeah, but I enjoyed the film. And then um, when he directed Mechanic. I wrote a, a review on Mechanic, and then he read my review, he contacted me, we met, and that's how we started doing a uh, sitcom for television. So bila saya, when I met Mat Som, I, um, I dragged him to see the preview, to watch the preview, yeah? because uh, he was the one who introduced me into film, he was the one who taught me uh, filmmaking, uh, the elements of film, camera work, and things like that. So um, I was happy when he said, um, "Hatta, uh, you made it." Yeah? So, pada saya bila guru saya told me this, that, that kind of thing, I, I feel that I fulfill my my function as a seorang anak murid kan, yang yang boleh meng, me, mengembirakan gurunya kan. So when we, we collaborate to do uh, Pimai Pimai Tang Tu, uh, it was another, uh, another uh, successful effort. It stayed on television for almost 16 years. I, remember, I, I think some of you 
were not born yet when 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 Pimai Pimai Tantu was first screened on television. We have a great time together. We tried to get all the feedback from the audience. In fact, uh, the first uh, when the first episode of Pimai was screened on television, uh, we went around. Uh, um, dekat kawasan rumah flat dan sebagainya nak tengok sama ada orang ketawa atau tidak kan and then the next day uh, we went to uh, pejabat kerajaan nak dengar were they talking about Matsum, uh, were they talking about Pimai that was screened on television last night so kita dapat all that feedback you know before we proceed with the next episode and things like that yeah so Hafsham is my guru actually. Um, one of the icons, uh, I mean, one of the obvious uh, images uh, uh, featured in Matsum is uh, Kuala Lumpur as a yeah KL as a social space, you know, yeah. characterized by markers of modernity yes. and you know um do you have something to say about kl back then bro um, kl in the 1980s especially um i i came to kl in the 70s um it was uh, it was a town that was uh, being uh, rebuilt yeah rebuilt um, lots of things um, at not as as they are today. It was very, uh, it was very. Uh, what 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 should I say? Not as modern as what you see KL today. Yeah, uh, those were the days when um, uh, pajak gada is still around. Yeah, uh, people travel by mini buses, and um, it it costs only forty cents. And, Regardless of where you want to go, you pay only 40 cents. Yeah? You can go as far as uh, Gomba or Batu Cave, or you pay only 40 cents. Uh, but it was dangerous because the first bus mini was the uh, Datsun. Um, it was not even a bus, it was a coaster. It was a coaster, and, and the way the driver drive through KL, uh, it was... It was uh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, um, I wanted to show that in films. I wanted to show that in film because uh, that is part and parcel of the reality that that people has got to go through in their daily lives. Yeah, and um, I'm trying to portray young people uh, in those period, in that period, how difficult it was. Yeah, um, Norman mentioned about about the credit title film made in Malaysia. I forgot to mention just now. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, I want to bring Malaysian national cinema to the world. So to me, representing Malaysia is very important. The tagline, uh, Made in Malaysia, to me is very important because I want to tell the world that this, this is a film that came from Malaysia. This is a film that is made in Malaysia. And with the multicultural background, multicultural uh, uh, languages that we have, I never, I never um, put that away, yeah, because that is part and part of the reality that we have to face. We are not just Malays; there are Chinese, there are Indians, there are Punjabis living together. So, to me, that is very important. The latest film that I wrote uh, is titled um, "Love Is Color Blind," yeah. I would like to make a film about youngsters uh, uh, having um, friends um, falling in love without having to uh, without having to consider colors. Yeah. So my next film that I'm working now at the moment is called Love Is Colorblind. Cinta buta warna. Yeah? Cinta buta warna. So I want to depict that because. Uh, I, I, I talked to my children, I said, we are living together in this country. It's not just us alone, it's everybody else and it belongs to the, 
to the to the to everybody. Yeah. So we should be uh, living together harmoniously. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, beside KL uh, as a uh, uh, capital city of Malaysia, um, this film also um, depicts uh, Kampung. Uh, because um, also I think um, um, it is well known, is as, as known um, that um, large uh, work also deal to a certain extent um, with this um, rural-urban divide or rural-urban dichotomy. And um, even during those times, um, uh, we witnessed um, a kind of uh, transition, you know, like uh, the migration of uh, people from the rural area, from Kampung to the city, you know, to the urban areas. And um, in Lutz's work, to, to, to a certain extent, in Lutz's work, um, they normally, um, Lutz normally uh, depict or portray Kampung as uh, idyllic, pastoral, and you know, like, um, in, in other words, he tends to romanticize Kampung or village. Right? So, um, do you echo when, when you did or directed Matsum? Did you echo Lat's uh, perspective or Lat's sentiment in regard to the depiction of this rural and urban divide? Or you know, it was simple. Um, if you see Matsum, uh, the parents in the village, his parents, uh, especially has a very simple way of thinking. Yeah? Um, if you got a job, you're working in the city, that's a big thing to us. Yeah? So uh, when you come back to the kampong, I would love to introduce you to everybody in the kampong that I know. I would like to introduce you to all my friends. I would like to tell my friends that, hey, look, my son is working in KL. But the father never realized that how difficult it was for his son to survive in a city like KL. Yeah? So the simple thinking of the Malay uh, in the Kampong um, does not really mean, uh, does not really uh, tally with what life of a Kampong boy living in KL. Yeah? Um, I want to show that. I, I want to tell people that, hey, look, he's, I mean, being a, being a, 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 a part-time writer for a newspaper is no great thing. Yeah? Uh, life is still difficult. Um, he has to go and pawn his, uh, his uh, wristwatch just to buy lunch. Yeah? And at the same time, I would also like to tell people that, hey, look, this is Malaysia. The flag is is uh, berkibar dengan megah dan begitu tinggi kan but down there someone is having difficulty uh, buying his lunch you know so hal-hal uh, begini harus di di diberikan uh, perhatian yeah you 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 should show this yeah um apa lagi eh? um of course if you 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 look at KL these days anda lihat Kuala Lumpur hari ini sudah jauh berbeza kan? Very much different from the 70s and 80s and 90s. Uh, tapi that was life. That was life. And um, yang penting pada saya, um, again, the multiracial background. Even though uh, his parents live in the kampung, tapi uh, he works in the tin mine. Yeah? And... Um, Oh, it was very difficult to get the scene of the tin mine. Uh, in the 90s, the only one, the only uh, kapal kore, uh, tin dredging machines that was available was only in Puchong. I've got to go through uh, lots of um, uh, hassle to get uh, the permission to shoot uh, on the tin dredging. I was lucky that Lat uh, knows someone um, who who owns the place, 
and then we managed to get it. Saya nak tunjukkan to the to the new generations that uh, life in those days uh, bukan hanya setakat uh, orang kata jual kuih, buka warung dekat kampung, but there were people who lives in the kampung and kerja dia uh, uh, yang kita tak pernah nampak lah. These days, uh, I think none of us yang yang uh, muda-muda sekarang pernah tengok kapal korek. I don't think you have seen kapal korek again. Uh, nama pun kapal korek. Bila orang sebut kapal korek, you kata, what is this? What korek? Kan? <laughs> And it was thin raging. It was interesting. So, uh, dulu ada uh, not just kapal korek, tapi kalau lombong biji, ada dulang. ya, yeah, dulang. And then ada palong where you shoot a uh, hose of water to break the earth uh, and then salurkan pada air dan dapat biji kan it was uh, so life with the kampung do, during those period was not just uh, jual kuih pergi tangkap ikan semua tak uh, the malays in the kampung has already uh, get themselves involved in all sort of um, activities like this yeah so itu yang satu lagi yang saya nak tunjuk dalam maksum Uh, kalau if I look at the comic book the visuals actually attracted me plus of course lat lah but one thing that I never realized during that time was um lat's readership was uh, uh, multicultural and multiracial yeah um it was his comic book it was his comic in the new straits times that attract uh, more readers And I never realized that um, most of, of of his readers were basically English uh, speaking, bukan uh, bukan cakap Melayu. So when he first wrote Matsum in Malay, I thought it was a good, it was a, a great time. It, wa- it would be a good turning point for a Malaysian cinema to be introduced to not just the Malays but also to the non-Malays in the country. So that was the reason why I I picked Matsum to turn it into a film. But it, it was difficult because um, uh, I have to show almost everything in that particular period. The KL with with mini buses, the pawn shop, the kapal kore, the kampung. Um, it was difficult. I took uh, 35 days to shoot the film. Yeah, uh, Pian knows about it. Uh, he appeared as one of the poets um, too many things that that need to be shown uh, during that period poetry reading in the bus um uh, what else uh, the one bus eh? the concert the rock concert the rock concert during that period um, wings awi and uh, search was the top two uh, rock band in the country um, i was shooting the film on a very shoestring budget, very limited budget. In fact, um, th- I, the way I gathered the money, yeah, kalau saya ceritakan pada anda, anda akan terkejut. I contacted all my school friends. Yeah, um, told them that I'm making a, a film from Lat's comic book, um, discussed with Lat. Um, and all of us, put our money together yeah my school friends my schoolmate my classmate uh chip in uh 10000 20000 uh lat himself put in about 32000 36000 um i allocate um macam macam kita beli share lah eh uh, the film cost me 265000 to make so that out Out of that 265,000, saya bahagi-bahagikan. Satu lot berapa? Satu lot is 10,000. So, my friends will purchase three lots, two lots, a lot bought three lots. You know? So, that's how we, we gathered the money. And it, I was lucky because uh, after spending 265,000, the film collected uh, more than 800,000. So, during that particular period, <laughs> collecting... 800,000 was already a great thing yeah so my investors my investors they got back their money within three months and then uh, after six months they get uh, 100% profit 
So everybody was happy. How I wish that film can still be met in that method. But these days it's too expensive. You have to have millions to make a film. Yeah? I made a film in 1990. I spent only 265,000. It's quite low budget. Yeah? Yeah. Um, perhaps the last question from me, Prof. Um, you mentioned um, just now um, the focus, uh, the film focuses on the 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 struggling uh, uh, protagonist. You know, uh, he's a stringer, right? Yeah, um, and he has also a working class father. So, um, if we locate Matsum within a uh, broader uh, Prof Hatta's body of work, including uh, uh, Prof Hatta's plays and you know TV sitcoms, um, I think you you seem to focus on and champion the working class, uh, the the poor and the poor as well, Prof. Um, can not, not just the yeah. poor, but yeah. uh, people who has the courage, people who has the courage to leave the kampong and came to the big city and face all the problems and the hardship that they have got got to go through. Yeah, it's it's, it's not. Um, uh, we can term it as uh, urban poverty, but I believe that in those days, almost everyone faced uh, were facing the same thing. Facing the same kind of struggle, yeah. Tato lah sekarang pun masih ada struggle, tu masih ada saya rasa. Kan, we still have to struggle for life, kan. Uh, but to me, it's the courage, yeah, the courage. I mean, um, someone like Matsum, if he doesn't have the courage, he could have pack up his bag and go back to the kampung, mm. yeah, because his father is working. Um, his uh, stepmother has ladang uh, kambing, so he can easily survive. But it's the courage and it's the determination to get to know people, to get to know the world. Mm. Yeah? So the same thing, I tried to make a film and try to introduce Malaysian film to the world. Yeah. That was what my intention was. Yeah? It was not just to make money, you know, but I want to introduce Malay cinema, Malay cinema to the world. Let them see who we are, what kind of problems are we facing, and how would we solve the problem. Yeah? To me, this is very important. Malaysia is a very small, tiny country. You go anywhere, uh, when you say you are from Malaysia, they would say, where is it? Yeah? Singapore? No, it's, it's way bigger than Singapore. It's above Singapore. Oh, I never know that. Yeah? Yeah. When I was in the US, I had pr similar problems. Where are you from, Malaysia? Africa? <laughs> they asked me. And Africa is it somewhere in Africa? I said no, no. Uh, saya kadang-kadang banyak. Um, they kata, um, are you a rich country? You come from a rich country? I said no, no, no biasa. Uh, why? But you, saya kena dekat US sekali. Saya tak tahu. Um, a friend of mine asked me, um, what product do you produce, Malaysia? I said. Uh, rubber. Oh, we use lots of that. <laughs> I, I never know that, you know. So, I, saya ni, uh, saya ni bodoh masa tu ingatkan rubber lah kan. Rupanya dekat, dekat America, they call condom tu, dia panggil rubber. Kan? <laughs> saya ni being very truthful kan. Yeah, we produce lots of rubber. Uh, yeah, we use lots of that, my friend. Okay, I think enough questions from me. Um, all right, uh, now let's open to the floor. So, anyone uh, having questions? Uh, I just to us, yeah. yeah. Prof. Hatta? Yes. Yes, look. Go ahead. Um, is it okay if I have three questions? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, how was the reaction of foreigners seeing the film just now? Is it when it was shown in Tokyo? Oh, okay. Um, it was shown in the Best of Asian Cinema uh, category. So it was together with Koreans, the Turkish, um, Iran, I think, um, Indonesia, uh, Philippines, Philippines. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
I guess um, they get to know something about life in Malaysia. I mean, for the first time. Yeah. Because the film was uh, subtitled in both English and Japanese. So I guess uh, Tokyo International Film Festival was actually trying to introduce all the Asian cinema to the Japanese. So um, to some of them, they feel a bit strange because they compare their life to what we are uh, having. Um, to the Japanese, probably this is a bit primitive. Yeah, having to knock your your toothpaste with a stone to get it, <laughs> to get just to brush your teeth for that particular morning, and uh, some of them think that oh, we are very we must be very poor, and but it was a good beginning. I guess it was a good beginning. Yeah. Second question: um, Will there a reboot of Pimai Pimai Come Too? If there is a reboot of Spanajaya, for example. It's in the pipeline. Yeah, we, we, are, we are discussing it. You are discussing it. But of course, uh, it has to be helped by the youngsters as well. We might introduce a new, new cast, yeah? beside the old one. In fact, um, um, on the 31st of this month, 31st of March, during the uh, International Book Fair in PWTC, I will introduce uh, uh, my latest book, The Writing of Sitcoms, um, using examples from Pimai, and we'll be calling uh, three of the original cast to be on stage. You free, feel free, you're most welcome. Yeah? 31st of March. Hey, oh. This month is March, right? Yeah. Oh. It's, um, it's very rare to see um, the perspective of Sabah and Sarawak and you don't usually see um, characters from uh, Sabah and Sarawak. Sabah and Sarawak. Uh. So do you think um, Malaysian industry will, will include those multiculturalism um, besides the perspective of Semenanjong, will include Sabah and Sarawak's perspective too? Um, we did quite a lot of uh, episode in Pimai. Uh, introducing um, characters from Sabah and from Sarawak. If you remember, um, uh, one of the episodes, we brought in characters from Sarawak. And the Sabah, I think, are good. So I can't remember. But my, my love is colorblind. It covers all. It covers all. It covers the Chinese, the Punjabis, the Indian, the... Uh, Ibans, everything. Yeah. Okay. Ada soalan? Ingin bertanya? Ya, silakan. Oh, okay. The signage. The signage. Yeah. Uh, okay. I want to show the world that 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 we are uh, a democratic country. There is a parliament. <laughs> there is a jalan parliament there. And then parliament has to got to be around, kan? Kalau ada jalan parliament, kan? Uh, so some signs of the uh, democratic country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah any more questions? Yeah. Um, there's one scene about the rock concert. Yeah. So because Japanese Oh, yeah, yeah. L let me tell you the story. <laughs> Stadium, uh, Stadium Negara. Stadium Negara. Uh, that, that rock concert. I was a big fan of both uh, Wings and Serge. Amy Serge and, and Awi. Uh, to me, they, they are great singers. Um, um, you, you remember that? You, do you know that um, Serge, Amy Serge, is the first uh, rock band from Malaysia to be recognized by the Indonesians. Yeah, for the first time, they salute uh, a rock band from Malaysia. It was, uh, they put it on, uh, on par together with uh, um, Ahmad, Dan, uh, not Ahmad Dhani, uh, the rock singer. 
uh, I can't remember the name. God bless, God bless from Indonesia. They put it on together. Um, I have a very limited budget. I wanted to show uh, wings on stage with Awi. So, script yang saya tulis was with all the details because Matsum at that particular time was already a cadet journalist with uh, NST. Uh, dia tengah uh, bercinta dengan Yams. So, actually what I wanted to do was I wanted him to show it to Yam that look, if you come to this concert with me, me being the uh, journalist um, from uh, one of the top uh, publishers, uh, new newspaper publishers in the country, I can bring you backstage. I can bring you to meet Awi and all the band leaders. Tapi uh, rupanya, uh, with my <laughs> limited budget, uh, they were asking for a little bit of fees. Yeah, um, that time uh, Wings was under uh, Ali Baka. Ali Baka, a good friend of mine. Uh, his brother went to college together with me. Uh, I thought it was very reasonable for him to ask for some fees for my production team to film the stage, to go backstage, to meet Awi, to meet the rest of the band, mem band members. Tapi dia minta dan my producer cannot fulfill it. He was asking only 4,000. Masa tu duit dah, dah burst dah. Budget pun dah burst kan. So nak, nak bayar 4,000 tu dah tak ada duit kan. Mm. So that was the reason why you tengok the rock concert tu from the long shot sahaja. Okay. I don't have I don't have a apa nama close up of Awi close up. Kalau saya tengok saya punya original screenplay everything was there. Even the dramas drama dia nama Black kan bukan Black Black Search kan. Black Wings is Black kan. Uh, I wanted to show him playing the drum dengan kaki dia dan sebagainya. Tapi tak boleh buat because uh, I was I I can I can pay 4000. Hmm. Prof, in Lutz's work, it's a Ramli Sarip concert, right? Saya tukar. Saya tukar. Because, uh, because um, pada saya, uh, anak muda waktu itu, uh, lebih meminati Wings ataupun Search. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, banyak kalau tengok from the comic book tu, saya rewrite um, the character of the mother and the father tu, hmm. tak, tak banyak dalam comic, but I have to... Ini, ini... Uh, Cerita orang tua kan daripada kampung bapak-bapak kita kalau tengok anak besar dia fikir nak dapat menantu kan. So to me, I have to develop the father punya character, the mother punya character. So I rewrote the whole thing. But of course with large consent lah. Saya bincang dengan dia dan dia, dia setuju. Ya, Ada lagi soalan? Sila bertanya. Ini peluang. Uh, yeah. Is there any obstacles when you uh, shooting the Oh yeah, yeah, banyak. They they were not happy because we have to uh, to light them up, kan? <laughs> they were not happy. Yeah, kita nak kena suluh dia orang dengan lampu semua kan? Uh, tapi konsep tu kan panjang, so kita pergi banyak tempat lah. So alhamdulillah lah tak ada jadi apa apa tak tak gaduh apa tak ada lah. Kan? But they were not happy the the audience, the audience. Yeah. Hi, my name is Hakeem. So basically, you'll be we met. Yeah, yeah, we met in the elevator. Day. I didn't know that you were like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the new film that's coming, uh, Chinta, uh sorry, Love is Color Love is Color Blind. Like, um, most of storytellers in Malaysia, like our late Yasmin Ahmad, yeah, yeah. portrays mostly on other races besides Malays. Yeah, do you think that in your new film there could actually be more time, more background for the you know the other races that you uh, portray in your film? I think but so, yes. Yeah. Because it's like when we watch movies or films based on from Malaysia itself, there's always a little time, a short time for other races, and it's always revolved around Malaysia. This is going to be more details, um, um, including the parents' mere quarrel and everything. <laughs> yeah, because it's not going to be easy for, uh, say, for example, uh, the main character that I have in the film is um, a Malay family. Uh, their daughter uh, brought back 
a black husband. Because the mother thought that the daughter is having an American. To her, American is a white guy. American is a white guy. To the mother. Mak dia pengsan bila anak dia buat balik. American black. Yeah? So, um, banyak lagi. The Chinese, the Punjabis, the Ibans, uh, the quarrels of the parents, everything. The youngsters are all okay. In fact, they have a great wedding together. Yeah? Semua sekali uh, kahwin dalam satu dewan. Yeah? But the parents, the parents. <laughs> Discussion, uh, discussion level belum belum pasti lagi sebab uh, nak cari funder kan uh, nak cari funder orang Malaysia ni kalau cerita pasal multi level multi racial ni dia kurang sikit dia nak kira nak buat duit dia kan uh, du- uh, ini ni cerita ni gangster ada gangster tak oh ini ada hantu tak kan <laughs> ya yeah, ada lagi soalan Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, the film, I mean, the camera and the cartridges of film. What, what, what did you use? The, the, the Ah, yes. It, it was shot on 35 mm. During those days, kita tak ada digital camera lagi. So everything was, um, um, everything has to be working with a very tight budget. You have to calculate everything. You have to calculate the number of cans that you can spend. Yeah. Um, satu can cuma ada 400 feet yeah? So uh, I have to calculate my script My my, my screenplay Page by page uh, Per minute I have to calculate everything Because uh, I cannot spend more than 300,000 can 265,000 So everything has to be calculated And that's how I learned to make film The hard way Yeah uh, I believe that if you are in that kind of situation, you will think hard, harder and harder to get the best. Yeah. Um, sekarang orang joli kan, sebab banyak duit kan. Uh, tapi not me. I have to learn the hard way, and I believe that that's a good way of learning. If you want to teach film students, give them this uh, kind of method. Baru dia mula berfikir. Saya pernah diberitahu um, um, some of my friends were angry with the censorship board. Yeah, um, I told them. I said uh, censorship, censorship board is actually uh, a barrier for you to solve. It's actually a challenge for you. Without the censorship board. You will do everything, but with them, you will try to find ways. You will try to corner here and there to solve the problem. So basically, if you want to learn something, uh, guna can matter problem solving. Yeah, I believe that everything that we do, kalau kita amalkan ini, even even uh, I suggested to my friend, my 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 friends who are in medical school, I said, teach them how to solve problem, give them problem right from the beginning and they will find ways how to solve the problem. That's my method of making film or whatever things else, anything else. Yes. Yeah. Oh, last question. Huh? All right. Thank you. Thank you last to Azad question. for calling uh, me and Soalan screen the film. Ada? Any question? Last questions. Yeah. Uh. Hi. Um, so I noticed that a uh, number of uh, cast in your in this film uh, uh, has been casted in Be My Bad, Be My Tongue too as well. So <laughs> how, did, how did that come about? Yes. 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 Uh, um, the film, when the film was made, uh, Pimai Tantu was already almost 10 years. So um, I worked with uh, the cast very well. Imuda, um, Zami Ismail, 
the late Zami Ismail, the late Ahmad Busu, uh, has already w been working with me for almost 10 years. So it was, it was uh, when, I, I, when I wanted to do Matsum, um, saya fikir mereka. Uh, saya, saya carikan watak yang sesuai untuk mereka and it was easier to work with someone that you know their talent, you know their capacities, you know their ability, you know their ability, you know uh, how much can they contribute. In fact, not only that, the uh, poets, uh, they were all uh, my friends. Yeah, they were all my friends. So um, when you want to do something like that, get hold of your friends first. Because uh, you can trust your friends, yeah. They will, they won't fail you. That's that's my my principle of life. I, I always trust my friends. Okay. On that note, uh, I think um, we'll have to end our session today. So please uh, join me in thanking Prof Hatta. Thank and you. I hope uh, Thank you. you have enjoyed the film and also uh, got uh, something uh, from Prof Hatta's insight. Uh, his knowledge and experience. So, terima kasih juga kepada Gallery Ilham kerana sudi mengenal wayang budiman untuk bersama-sama dalam sesi ini. Terima kasih. Thank so, you again. Thank you everyone. Terima kasih semua. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>